So in the early 1900s, homeowners were basically getting screwed by banks. Like they were really getting it good because most mortgages were being offered at this time as adjustable rate mortgages, meaning the bank could change the interest rate on the loan at any time if they decided to. So the interest rate you end up paying could be much higher than the interest rate you initially signed for. And since most home loans for, for 15 or 30 years, um, yeah, this can have a huge impact on the overall cost of your home. So then, in the 1930s, the government created the Federal Housing Administration. And pretty much, the Federal Housing Administration was like, yeah, mortgage rates are going to be fixed now. Suck it, banks. So basically now you agree to a fixed interest rate when you sign for your home loan this was good for home buyers especially if interest rates were low because you could lock in that low interest rate for 15 or 30 years so after fixed rate mortgages were standardized life was pretty good for a while but then in the beginning of the 1970s something happened America's fashion taste was terrible. I mean, it was just god awful. And in addition to this, interest rates were at relative lows. Because of this, a lot of people were taking out home loans and enjoying the low interest rates at, say, 3%. Then in 1979, the Federal Reserve was like, hey, we haven't done anything stupid in a while, so screw it, let's raise interest rates to historically high prices. And so that's what they did. And they were successful. Interest rates soared to nearly 12%. Now, if you had money in a savings account in the bank, this was great for you because you could earn a 12% risk-free return on your money. But this was not a good situation for banks because banks make their money from interest collected on loans and the interest they pay on deposits is an expense. So the banks were in a situation where they were collecting 3% interest from the loans they had previously issued and paying out 12% interest on their deposits, meaning their short-term expenses were much higher than their short-term income. Now, if you're a bank, this is not an ideal situation to be in. Because of this, many banks were unable to pay their short-term debt and became insolvent. Now enter the solution to this problem, the mortgage-backed security. So basically, banks would underwrite a bunch of loans and then they would package these loans together into a security that investors could buy. And then people were like, there's no way this could backfire, right? And banks were like, of course not. What are you, stupid? So this was a great solution to the problem in the 1970s because if banks could sell their loans after they were issued, they did not face the risk of changing interest rates. These mortgage-backed securities were also very attractive investments because at the time, real estate was seen as a very low-risk investment. Because of this, mortgage-backed securities gained extreme popularity among investors, and eventually, they were everywhere. You probably own a mortgage-backed security and you didn't even know it. In fact, if you work in the United States and have a 401k, chances are you own a mortgage-backed security. So, for a time, everything was going great. Banks were pumping out loans like crazy. Investors were buying up mortgage-backed securities like crazy. The government was becoming corrupted like crazy. Everything was going great. But, and this may come as a surprise, eventually banks got greedy and they were like hey since we're just going to sell off this loan as soon as we underwrite it who cares if this guy can actually make his monthly mortgage payment or not because by the time he defaults we will have already sold his loan to another investor we're so smart yeah so this led to a huge increase in the number of subprime mortgage loans being issued Basically, if you had a heartbeat, you got a loan. And so naturally, the quality of mortgage-backed securities started declining. 
So, who were the schmucks buying these subprime loans from the banks? Well, potentially you. Because remember, basically everyone in America who had a 401k or another retirement account owned a mortgage-backed security. So, we were the schmucks buying the loans that were absolute trash and we didn't even know it. Don't you love capitalism? But, as we saw in the 2007 mortgage crisis, their subprime lending eventually caught up with the banks. But, I'm not going to go into that right now because I would like to do a full story on the mortgage crisis in a later video. So, if that's something you guys would like me to do, let me know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.